Chapter 4 The Ramping Up Spiritual warfare is an evil issue. Warfare in itself is evil. If evil did not exist, there would be no warfare of any kind. Page 17, The Handbook for Spiritual Warfare. Every survivor of childhood ritual abuse testifies that human sacrifices have occurred and do occur. Page 80 The Edge of Evil The Rise of Satanism in North America A contemporary observer noted that in attendance at both the magic seminars and the rituals of the Church of Satan were physicians lawyers, engineers, teachers, former members of the FBI, IBM executives, and even street cleaners. At one gathering of eight, half were either PhDs or PhD candidates. Page 118 of Painted Black. Few people are aware of the hard evidence that secret brotherhoods quietly dominate NASA, with politics far more aligned with ancient religious and occult mystery schools. Back cover of Dark Mission, The Secret History of NASA. spirits will come. She came in the door of my office with her mom in tow. She was silent, very stiff. She didn't smile, nor did she answer my first questions with words, only nods. I could feel it the presence of dark spirits. I looked at her as she sat down. Her mother was right outside the door and a worker was in the room with us. I looked at her again with a pause then said, uh, they don't want you to talk, do they? And again I spoke. They want you to leave, right? She nodded in affirmation. I don't like these spirits at all. They were not meant to inhabit human minds or hearts. I looked at the worker in the room to see if he was ready. And I just began an opening prayer. Immediately she was thrown to the ground began wrestling around. I commanded the spirits in Jesus' name to stop it and leave her alone. I commanded again for the demon to answer me, and it did. It told me its name, and I commanded a third time for it to tell me how it got in this teenage girl. It told me the doorway she had opened up. Like so many before her, it was witchcraft and drugs. That was enough. We commanded it, and all with it, to leave her right now, again using Jesus' name. It shook her a little, then it left. She was free, and talking openly to me now. We went over what she needed to do with her life, what she needed to stay away from, and she agreed. She renounced those doors. The demons came through. And in prayer, she opened and surrendered her life 
to Jesus Christ. Once again, the phone rang. This one began telling me about a boy who said he was a satanic priest. When we arrived, the young man began telling us about his coven takeover and powers he had obtained. He continued in the car to tell us of his big powers and how he wanted to be the next black pope, uh, satanic pope. <laughs> I finally called out his name and stopped him. I said, if you have all this power, money, and position, why then do you want us to come up here? I will never forget the look I saw on the rearview mirror of the car as I stared at him sitting in the back seat. His countenance went down and he looked very disturbed and sad. His response, I have no joy. Mm. We arrived at the church, but he wouldn't go in, so we just sat there in the grass and talked to him about Jesus. Finally, I said, are you ready to ask Jesus Christ to come into your life and give you his love and power? He looked up as if to say yes. He started to say Jesus, but suddenly he was thrown to the ground. Before he could say the whole name, he was gagging, holding his throat and choking. Immediately we all began praying and I commanded the spirit to release him. He was still struggling and as we prayed, I told him, call out to Jesus call out to Jesus to come into his life and he would set him free. Finally, the demon departed and this young man prayed loudly for Jesus to come into his life and save him. He prayed prayers of renunciation of all the satanic practices, oaths, and evil he had done. We all prayed over him to cover anything and everything else that was needed. He and others were amazed at the viciousness of the demons. But we were even more amazed with the massive authority of Jesus' name carried and how the demons feared Jesus. We took this young man out to eat at a restaurant to follow up on him some more. We were all eating, laughing, praising God, when all of a sudden one of our workers spoke up loudly, pointing at the young man. He said, look, look at his face. <laughs> it's filled with joy. And look at that smile. We all agreed and praised God all the more. He was free, joyful, and enjoying this new exchange of powers. From darkness to light is what the scripture tells us. There is a difference, you know, a vast difference as to what spirit is in and upon you. One is infinite and unleashes all the fullness of the living Christ into a person's life. The other is finite and sought only to use this boy for degradation and evil. One is the Holy Spirit given the very life of God within, while the other is demonic and seeking to steal a soul. One we were meant for, and the other was not made for humankind. It's really something when you have been on both sides of the spiritual fence. You know very well one side is of heaven and the other is of hell. Do you really know why Jesus came? He who does what is sinful is of the devil. 
because the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's works. That's 1 John 3. More Encounters A man saying he had a dark cloud over him and felt oppressed. We listened more and then offered to pray. Once again we rebuked the powers of darkness and commanded them to leave him alone. Immediately he said that it had left and was off him. He was amazed and very thankful. We discussed the issues involved and, when he, and he went off with a living joy that only the Prince of Peace could give him. In this fallen world and with this massive ramping up of the dark spirits, they do come and in many ways. Another person was sitting before the two of us in an office. We were talking when all of a sudden this person switched personalities and a demonized sub-personality came up. This was a chosen one who had many sub-personalities and many demons. A very sinister look came on this girl's face. I looked at the fellow pastor, and he also saw it and wrote down a note. The spirit dwelling in the sub-personality looked at me and said, Do you want me? I instantly felt an unclean, perverse presence come at me like a wave. The spirit of God within me gave the discernment, and I started rebuking this unclean spirit and the fellow pastor and I both commanded this spirit to get out. It did. And the girl switched back to her main self. I looked at the pastor. I said that it was a demon that functioned in lust. He held up his writing pad. He showed me that he had written down a spirit of lust. We knew this spirit had left, but there was so much more ministry this person needed. A mom brought in Billy. He was fearful and she was mad. He had been invited to a party where there was free metal music alcohol and drugs. Sex was included too. And it was all a smoke screen for the real reason. A woman came to Billy during the party, took his hand and made a cut. She wiped his bloody hand in a book or made him write and claimed he was one of them. Some occult practices took place, and then he went home. Later that week, some from the group came to his house with a document, with a writing and some kind of script. It was a letter calling him to come to the next meeting. That's when he wandered out and told his mother he refused to go, and the coven threatened to kill him if he told anyone. A woman with an animal spirit stood at the door of my fellow pastor's office. She was brought upstairs by another worker who tried to tell her that the ancestral animal spirit guide was evil. When the pastor opened the door, she tried to confirm that it wasn't anything evil. The pastor said, let's see, and began to pray. Immediately the dark spirit surfaced and showed itself for what it was. She was overtaken, and an animal growling sound poured out of her mouth. 
The pastor prayed for the spirit to leave, and it left her. And when this lady realized what this was, it was exposed and kicked out by the authority of Jesus. She was overwhelmed with thanks and praised to God. A group of youths came to the church I was pastoring. Their pastor was a friend of mine, and he sent them to me. They had gone to a meeting where a weird man prayed over them in tongues, a supernatural other language, and spoke prophecies over them. They all felt strange, confused, were having a hard time praying. We prayed for them and broke the transferred demonic presence that was put on them by this imposter. This man was a chosen one. And his upfront personality seemed to be a minister. But the sub coven loyal demonized personalities were looking for more victims. This person was engaged by us. And we found he had a trail of many victims who were seduced by him and became his, his victims of sexual abuse. A woman brought to our church as a visitor stepped out into the sanctuary aisle and the voice of a demon bellowed out. Can't have her. She's ours. Everyone turned to look as I approached her with prayer, and she fell to the ground screaming and jerking. The whole church prayed and sang worship songs while some of us prayed over her. Someone had really hurt her and used this girl. It was some kind of priest who transferred demonic spirits into her mouth to mouth. When the demonic was hit by the power and authority of Jesus Christ who exposed them, they of course had to leave. She is now married and serving Christ with her husband. Praise God. The Ramping Up I could tell you many stories, like the ones above. This spiritual engagement has clearly ramped up in the last 30 years. I have now been in hundreds of spiritual exorcisms. We call them freedom encounters. And commanded dark spirits out of people. This book will have a few dozen stories of these episodes and is far from the millions that are out there who still need help. Sometimes when I sit and think about the encounters with the demonic we've had, I'm amazed we have had to engage so many. The people have been very young, old, black, white, male, female, etc. Most knew they had something wrong. Others knew they had demons they had welcomed in and at first wanted. Now most wanted them out. Well, a few fought back and wanted to keep their powers, the demonic given abilities. I have seen, felt, and experienced in many of these power encounters the nature and tact of the demons. They lie all the time. They try to stay in the bodies they inhabit, and we found out they all know one thing very well. They all know and have to obey the person, authority, and name of Jesus Christ. They know who Jesus is and what he did at the cross. These ancient dark spirits know that a judgment is coming. And they are full of hate. 
There may be many spiritual skeptics in this world. And maybe some are reading this book right now. I can tell you for sure, and many others in this field also know, that all these demons or fallen angels know Jesus Christ as God, Lord, and what he did on the cross has final authority. This work on the cross is hated and feared by the hordes of hell because they know that they know that its works seals their fate. Nevertheless, they are here and they are as mad as the devil himself. But woe to the earth and the sea because the devil has gone down to you. He is filled with fury because he knows that his time is short. Revelation 12 Dear folks have sent me articles that talk about people with voices in their heads and a dark presence on them. They talk about a shadowy presence that may visit them or uncontrolled addictions that seem to be supernaturally overpowering them. In my own area, demon-oppressed, possessed, and troubled folks have been brought to us from over 40 churches in five states. From one large church alone, over 100 members have come to us or were brought to our offices. They were seeking freedom from dark spirits and deliverance prayers. I've gone to six other states to pray for those who are victims of satanic ritual abuse or felt they had demonic presence in their lives. We have heard the demons scream now many times through the mouths of people possessed and taken over. Workers and I in Shadow of the Darkness have by the authority that Christ gave us in Luke 10 commanded dark spirits out of individuals in churches, schools, parks, on the streets, in the car, at a bookstore, in a hotel room, in homes, and even inside a McDonald's restaurant. The demons don't care where they are. And when they come up, when they manifest, <laughs> they can cause a scene. Wherever and whenever these evil ones have come up in a person, we responded with prayers of power and the authority of Jesus Christ. Again and again, we have seen the demonic spirits seized and comply with the authority of Christ. I have seen them try to harm the person as they were being kicked out. I have also seen the relief, joy, and peace that would follow one when a once demonized person was set free. Even Satanists and chosen ones would be amazed at a power and presence they have never seen before. When they saw the overwhelming presence of Jesus Christ and how the demons cringed and fear him, they were impressed and many were ready to surrender their lives to the person behind the power, Jesus Christ. With newfound freedom, an eagerness, willing, and joy, they accept the Savior Jesus Christ who rushes in with his gift of new life. See Mark chapter 5 or, or Acts chapter 16 for some clear examples of power encounters. Now, let's go over what some of the evidence is for the ramping up of demonic spirits in these last days. For me, it has been the massive number of cases of individuals who have come for help. I've seen demonized 
people hundreds of times now and the number of victims, urgency and power of the demonic has intensified over, over the last past 30 years. I've heard the demons speaking through possessed people scream, curse, and threaten me. I've also heard the demons yell that they will win, destroy the church, and kill Christians. I know their voices, eerie evil presence and tactics. I can tell you from an experienced standpoint that demonic presence, activity, and intensity has grown massively. And this is only the tip of the black iceberg below. The Vatican is calling for exorcists. In Italy, and actually a number of other countries, there has been a call for help. The request, the request is for exorcists. For those who can discern and get rid of the evil presence that has gotten into millions of people the world over. The Vatican has started new training in exorcism. And hundreds are now being trained. In Matt Baglio's book, The Right, The Making of a Modern Exorcist, he goes over a volume of stories of the once demonized and how they got there. It's clear the Catholic Church has to deal with thousands of cases. Author of The Right, speaking of the rise of demonization, writes on page 54 because millions of people were reportedly involved in the occult around the world and the numbers are on the rise the exorcism course would explain the ramifications to novice exorcist Books written on the occult, alternative spiritual practices, and even Satanism are flying off over packed bookshelves at Borders and Barnes and Noble bookstores. These kinds of books are offered by the thousands on Amazon.com. And also please realize that each book has an author. There are books on spells, rituals, summoning of demons, channeling, contacting, quote, angels, and many more on all kinds of new ways to connect to something spiritual. Many of these books are what the Spirit of God is called Doctrines of Demons, which is writings that were inspired by seducing angels who guided the believing authors. Books written about the ramping up of spiritual deception and spiritual warfare. I said many times in the 90s that more books have been written on spiritual warfare in the last 20 years than all of the history of Christianity, which is over 2,000 years. I have over 500 books on spiritual warfare, the rise of spiritual deception, books on the demonic presence and practices that are here or will be in the last days. The book you are reading right now will be added to the growing number of books that warn of end time spiritual confusion, deception, and destruction. A local pastor of one of the largest churches in my area came to one of our Shatter the Darkness meetings and spoke on spiritual warfare. He told us that night he was at the end of a series of sermons and teachings he was doing on the subject of spiritual warfare. The number of messages on spiritual warfare was over 35. He and many other pastors were on the cutting edge of ministry and know what time it is on the prophetic biblical clock are pouring out what has been neglected and what is vitally needed right now. The NAM, or the New Age Movement, as some call it, is the largest, fastest-growing occult, 
cultic spiritual movement in the entire history of Christianity. It is a challenge because it seeks to use Christian terms and phrases, but change the meaning. It proclaims a Christ, but this New Age concoction is nothing like the real Christ of history, scripture, and eternity. Nam, the New Age movement, has hundreds of millions of followers the world over and is the foundational spiritual system that nurtures the need for a one-world system. It seeks new globalism in both political and spiritual arenas. It has no direct leader or founder yet, but Antichrist is coming, however. Its growth is massive and influence worldwide. Many have come to our offices for prayer to get rid of the spirits they opened up to and the New Age movement spiritual experiences. See the chapter on NAM, New Age movement, in this book for more. We saw in youth ministry that Satanism and dark occultism was the fastest growing subgroup among high school students in the 80s and 90s. The signs, symbols, and satanic themed music were filling the minds and hearts of millions of youth. The satanic bible and hundreds of satanic ritual books, songs, and images have filled the imaginations of America's youth for now over 40 years. As one of the youth in the late 60s and early 70s, I was reading the dark occult books, listening to groups like Lucifer's Friend, and plastering my bedroom walls with images of hell and demons coming out of ritual circles. Knocking down the doors. If someone is knocking hard at your door, you may want to get up and quickly open the door to see what the fuss is all about. That's how physical home invasion crime activity occurs. Now there's a spiritual knocking. Many are opening the door without caution. The issue here is the fact of the predicted invasion of dark spirits ramping up their work in the last days. Here are some of the revelations that come from the Spirit of God about the work, presence, and ramping up of dark spirits in these days. Only scripture gives an accurate and preemptive revelation on this ancient hate. Only the infinite Spirit of God can give the heads up on what this underworld of the demonic is up to and planning. The omniscience and omnipresence of the Spirit of God would reveal that He knows them all, where they are, and what they're up to. The presence, power, and work of a very real, radical evil is ramping up. God alone in Scripture gives us the facts on the origin, nature, methodology, and fierce agenda of Satan's existence and desires. Only scripture gives us this level of revelation of a real and very radical evil. Without this insight, we would only be guessing at what is happening to our lives and our world. God is specific, preemptive, and exact. Here are some of the biblical revelations and predictions of the ramping up to the highest pinnacle of satanic power ever in history. What is here now is unprecedented, but it's only the beginning of hell's agenda. The 
The ramping up of seduction and spiritual deception is spoken about more than the rapture and millennium put together. We are warned first of all, and most of all, about deception. Jesus in Matthew 24 is central in all the predictions of the swelling of dark forces. This chapter stands in the middle of the Old and New Testament prophecies and connects them in a clear, unified unveiling of coming global events. Jesus, in answering the questions about the end of the world, starts with and emphasizes, Let no one deceive you. The ramping up of many false Christs, prophets, teachers, to do the one thing, deceive many. In Matthew 24, we are warned about these false spiritual leaders and the powers behind them. All that is written there corresponds with many other warnings the Spirit of God has selected to give us as a heads up and a warning of what to expect. Each of these false Christs, prophets and teachers, are the opposite of the real Christ and are initiated directly by demons warring against God, the church, and seeking to, to deceive the world. The fact that there are many now, and will be many more, coming gives evidence to the work of dark spirits, and the willingness of those who do not have the Spirit of Christ in them, to embrace the growing darkness. The ramping up of imposter spirits and doctrines of demons. In 1 Timothy 4, the prediction is clear. Again, the Spirit of God, demonstrating His eternal and infinite knowing, paints a scripture of the future we are sliding into. The Holy Spirit, about 2,000 years ago, expressly, emphatically and factually says that a pouring out of very seducing dark spirits will come in the last days they will use willing vessels which are people they will give writings to influence many and have one agenda one agenda to seek to pull people away from God Christ and the faith and establish an alternative. The ramping up of demonic supernatural powers and abilities is foretold also. In 2 Thessalonians 2, there are predictions of the supernatural work of Satan, the secret power of lawlessness at work, and supernatural real but counterfeit miracles, signs and wonders, all this will come with a growing rise in every sort of evil that deceives those who embrace it. The demonic cloaked to look like angels, ancestors, and friends who will give any kind of spiritual experience they could be used to ensure deception. The prophetic picture of the rise of Babylon is massive. If you will study Revelation 18, you see the final judgment on a spiritual system God calls Babylon. This is the culmination and pinnacle of the work of dark spirits. Their manifestation and what this counterfeit spiritual system has done to the world will go beyond any level of demonism in the past. God shows society by that future time is filled with operating demons on every level. That they have polluted and deceived the whole world and they have influenced the death of the saints of God. These dark spirits operation in and through people has brought grave moral and spiritual adultery to billions. Yes, billions. 
This is a future look at what is rising among us right now. The bulging spiritual presence that seeks the coming Antichrist will be sensed and present before his apocalypse or unveiling. The chaos that will open the door for Homo Satanus, Satan human flesh, comes by that ramped up dark power. It is spiritual forces that build it and bring it. The Black Awakening, the revolt, is packed with that deceptive power from head to toe. When released, that satanic chaos will be like a planetary shock wave unleashed from hell itself. The great revolt or rebellion of 2 Thessalonians 2 is charged with the work of the supernatural work of Satan. And please, be sure of this. This evil domain is up to violence and is following a plan born out of the heart of the one who wanted to dethrone God in Isaiah 14, kill Jesus in Revelation 12, and control the world by deadly force. These extra-dimensional entities and ascended masters are roving imposters spiritually and have no mercy at all. It is clear to me that a massive advance of dark spirits have been knocking on many doors now as never before. My premise is the rise of demonic presence operating actively in lives, societies, and the world is directly related to and corresponds with the rise of violence, unrest, and chaos. Jesus himself connects the ramping up of demonic deception, earth changes, and societal breakdown. Jesus in Matthew 24 says, Tell us, they said, when will this happen, and what will be the sign of your coming, and of the end of the age? Jesus answered, Watch out that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name, claiming, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. You will hear of wars, and rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of birth pains. Also, because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold. Finally, the ramping up is so vast, it is impossible to list all the new doorways of the demons. Their presence has brought thousands of cults, new demonic writings, and spiritual leaders who are deceived and help deceive millions more. Seeing the New Age spirits operating in education, business, politics, and invade military development is shocking. Paganism, Wicca, forms of voodoo, and even UFO cults have filled the news for years now. The blatant face of Satanism in schools, crime, music, on TV, in books and poured out on the WWW is astounding. The difficulty of all this ramping up is that it's like the frog in the kettle approach. This happened so slowly over the last 50 years 
that millions have no idea that the dark waters are boiling and the world is so tender for what's next. The blast of the black awakening. <laughs>